what is up guys uh just gonna make a preview I guess I'm um, back in Tennessee I'm uh, actually with my mom this time and I'm sorry if you can hear the noisy cars going down the road around right down here I'm in I'm in Titansville <laughs> you know the Titans country I guess uh, but uh um I ain't got much to say uh, much like last time uh, but uh, I am going to make a preview video. I haven't looked up much about them. I haven't done my research. Again, this is a pretty much a pointless video. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, caution if reading, watching this because there's, I mean, all I'm going to be talking about is bullcrap. But, uh, but uh, we're playing the St. Louis Rails. Now, see, what I don't get is how a team can be well yeah actually I do understand how a team can be so inconsistent hmm St. Louis gets blew out by Dallas then they blow out Houston which I understand I mean I, I get it they don't have a quarterback Houston don't but shab has been okay for him in the past and this is just all of a sudden been a media frenzy about Shaw being a bad quarterback he's not that bad and I don't know why they're starting screw head it's like the Josh Freeman effect you know a quarterback has a bad few games and he's had such a good like not necessarily great career or good but he's he's got the job done and all of a sudden just a few games he gets benched so I mean, it's understandable he wasn't playing good, of course, you know, the media was all over him and everything, but the thing is, the Rams, the, I mean, the Houstons, Houston Texans, have the best defense, like, overall. Maybe it's because Matt Schaub throws nothing but pick, pick sixes, and that's where they, the other team gets all the points. I don't know, but... Uh, I do know they had a good defense, and they and the Rams still scored what 38 points on them or something like that, and they blew them out. But the Rams couldn't even beat Dallas. I mean, and Dallas's defense isn't that great. Uh, but so I mean I don't I don't know I don't see how a team can score 38 points against Houston whenever they couldn't even score 10 against. Dallas. So I mean, it's they're kind of like us. They're really inconsistent. Their defense is inconsistent. I like their defense. I like St. Louis's defense. Believe it or not, I think I think they got a pretty dangerous defense. And this is going to be a scary game for us because we're trying to game plan for Tampa because we got to play them next Thursday and game plan for the Rams. And uh, I just watched Ron Rivera's interview live and. Uh, the way he talked, we didn't have a good practice yesterday, and they just seemed not focused. He said it was a little better today, but he said that it just made me feel like the team's not focused on this game good enough as they should. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they're starting to have fun playing the game instead of worrying about trying too hard and forcing mistakes. Maybe maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they're learning how to win now. I don't know yet. We're 2-3. and three. This game is for sure the pivotal game that we need to win and what worries me if we're not focused on this game are we focused on having a winning season this year because this game is very very pivotal we could still lose it and make the playoffs by God's grace I don't know how we would but we could but this game is a huge swing game the Arizona game was pretty big and we lost this, that Minnesota game, you know, we was just like, whatever, the, our season's over, you know, everybody has had their hopes low, and then they come out and play like that. I mean, what in the world's up? Who do we expect to play this Sunday? A team that's scoring 35 points and not allowing any touchdowns, or a team that's letting the game be close the whole game and then losing it in the fourth quarter. If this game is close going into the fourth quarter, you can mark it up as an L for us. That's just how it's been. That's how that's how it's been for the past three years, I guess. So, if we see the team that can win, well, we have a good chance 
of making the playoffs. We have a good chance of having a winning year and hopefully turning it into another magical season. Us Panther fans have a little more faith, a little more hope in our team since that 2003 season because that season is what developed a lot of hearts for the Panthers. I mean, it's just that season was so magical. Like nobody, we came out of the blue. Like nobody expected us to do what we did, and we just came out of the blue, out of just, and it completely shocked everybody. We was winning these close games. We was the anti Panthers of who we were in the past two years, <clears throat> and the Panthers aren't gonna do anything until they start winning close games. I mean, you can just look at this team on paper and know why you need to be scared of them. I mean, Cam Newton, okay, this is just the offense. I mean, the defense has done their job, pretty much. They've been a little inconsistent, but they've gotten their name out there. <clears throat> but you got Cam, Mike, D'Angelo, Jonathan when he's healthy, Steve Smith, and Ted Ginn has done his job. So, I mean, that's such an explosive offense. And then we got a pretty solid offensive line that's just not been playing good together. I mean, since Sen Salutu went out, I mean, I figured we were screwed because we weren't going to have no depth and rotation that was going to be tired. But it looked pretty good against Minnesota, and it, could, it was enough to hold Jared Allen back. And uh, so, I, it looked good, but it, that offensive line is the only thing that just doesn't even look great on our offense. I mean, maybe Brandon LaFell, you could say, you know, he's not proven himself yet, and he's, uh, you know, he, he's sometimes will have a good game, but i tell you what, the real superstar for the Carolina Panthers, our second wide receiver, is Donald LaFell. Not Brandon. When Donald LaFell shows up, he has a career day. Donald LaFell last week, 107 yards receiving and a touchdown. I mean, he blew my fantasy up. You know, I couldn't even find him on weight. Like, even if I typed in Donald LaFell on NFL Fantasy, I couldn't even find him. So, I don't know who this Donald LaFell guy is, but if he shows up over Brandon... We might actually have a chance, and we might actually have a really dangerous offense. But, and another thing, Cam's got to play that way again. He he only threw one bad pass in that game, and that was the very first pass. The very first pass. It's easy to forget because it was the very first pass. It should have been picked off, and he threw it right over his head right after an interception that uh, uh, Castle threw over uh, his wide receiver's head, and we intercepted it. So, but... He really almost gave the ball right back, and I think, I don't know, he can't play that way. He, he's got to play the way he did after that pass from then on. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, there's not much to say about this game. I don't know how many, who they have injured or how good their secondary is. or I know their run stop's not too good. It's very inconsistent, but it can be good. But... It's just when it's bad, it's bad, just like the team. When, when St. Louis is bad, they're bad. When they're good, they're good. And their defensive line and run stops the same way. But, uh, so hopefully we can see an inconsistent St. Louis and a more consistent Panthers and we'll win. Uh, and I want to touch up on one subject, like this off subject kind of. And so my preview is done now. I just want to talk about this before I end this video. I understand all the hype. Andrew Luck has gotten. I really do. He's He's got a lot of promise as a young quarterback, and he's won close games, and he's won games. But that's that's the only difference. Cam Newton has had better numbers. Besides, you, he threw for a little more than Cam did his rookie year. But it's because he threw the ball like 150 more times. And his completion percentage was 54%. That is terrible. Terrible, and he he turned the ball over many more times than Cam. He's and Cam was accountable for way more touchdowns. In Cam's career, he's done a lot better. Andrew Luck is actually the sixth worst quarterback for yards per game right now. Cam's the seventh worst, but still, I mean you can't go by those stats. But I don't understand all the hype Andrew Luck has gotten, other than the win-loss record. That that's the only difference. He's turned, I mean, but if you look at the Indianapolis team, there's they have a pretty solid team. Even though they have they look, they have that bad uh, record, 1-15 uh, or 2-14 when they got Andrew. It was because they didn't have a quarterback that was worth the crap. But they still got Reggie Wayne. 
you know, they still had a, uh, well, I can't say they had a decent running game, but that was that was the main problem, too. Running back and quarterback, that was their only problem. But now look at them. They got Trent. They got, I mean, they've always had Reggie Wayne. They had Ty Hilton. I think they had him then. They might not have had him, but they still had, they've always had solid receivers. They've always had a pretty decent defense. And, uh, well, average defense. But the average defense has been there for a long time. But, I mean, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I mean, I, I feel like Andrew Luck's getting way too much hype or Cam's not getting enough, which we all know Cam's, the media loves just bashing on him. And they, they don't have much to bash about. I mean, they just want to say he was pouting. But us as Panther fans, when we watch them videos on Panthers.com every week, we didn't look at it as him being pouty. We looked at that as Cam being Cam. I mean, that who who wouldn't be upset if they can't win a game in the fourth quarter? I mean, if you threw an interception or a ball in the dirt like to win the game, and who wouldn't be upset at themselves about that? And then you got to go to an interview and be like, oh yeah, I threw that interception. Yeah, I, I got I got to do better next time. Yeah, who 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 does that? I mean, whenever he called that reporter sweetheart and said, you know. Uh, whatever he said, like, I need a suggestion of box because I sure don't know. He was just playing around. I mean, dang, he gets over-criticized way too much. But this video is 11 and a half minutes, so I'm I'm done talking. Uh, but final thoughts, Andrew Luck gets, is, like, not that he's overhyped. It's just talk about Cam, you know, if you're going to talk about Andrew because the only difference is the win-loss record. I don't hear no nothing about Cam ever. But uh, anyway... I guess I'm done here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep pounding.